This is everything you could want to know about Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. Disney's Polynesian Village Resort is one of the most popular resorts in Disney World and it has pretty much everything you could possibly want. This is a crash course in Polynesian so that you can decide if a stay here is right for you and know what to expect from this hotel. The Polynesian Village Resort is themed to the South Pacific and is a bit of an oasis of tropical palms, lush vegetation, and a whole lot more. This hotel is located in the Magic Kingdom area and it is one of the three monorail resorts. So there is a monorail station in the hotel. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but as you might guess, that also means this is one of the most expensive hotels in Disney World. As a Disney hotel, you can expect to see those Disney perks like early theme park entry, 30 minutes early to the park of your choice, and free transportation. But since this is a deluxe hotel, you also get some added benefits like extended evening hours where you get to go to a theme park after hours on select nights. This hotel offers standard hotel accommodations as well as Disney Vacation Club accommodations. DVC is Disney's timeshare program and there are villas at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort that can be rented using points from this program. There's also a brand new DVC tower coming to the hotel soon. That new tower is set to include new dining, new experiences, as well as a ton of Disney Vacation Club rooms. Now let's talk about the most important part of any hotel and that's the rooms. The Polynesian offers standard pool marina view, theme park view, garden view, and lagoon views, plus club level options and suites. And of course there are those Disney Vacation Club options as well. The rooms are large and have a Polynesian theme with some subtle and not so subtle Moana details. They tend to be very popular. This resort is one of the most popular on property and part of that is due to the rooms. In general, you can expect rooms at deluxe hotels to mean more amenities and larger spaces. In 2023, standard rooms at Polynesian range from $660 to $1,200 per night, and of course can go up from there depending on view, beds, and date. If you're curious about all the nitty gritty details of a Polynesian room, you can check out my full tour of Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, where I show you everything there is to know about the room. And when I talk about specialty rooms, some of the most special rooms in all of Disney World are here as well, with the Polynesian bungalows. These are bungalows that sit right out on the water, where you can watch all the boats pass heading to and from Magic Kingdom. They are super cute and a dream for many, but wildly expensive and controversial as to whether or not they're worth the price. But these are the Bora Bora bungalows. Now, one of the reasons people love Polynesian so much is due to the recreation here. There is a ton of recreation at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, which is something you can expect of most deluxes. As you can see right here, there are tons of beaches all around the hotel. So you can go sit right on the water and enjoy a view of Magic Kingdom and the boats going by and even the fireworks at night. This beach right here is a great place to watch the fireworks from. In addition, you can get sporty by playing volleyball or hitting the jogging trail around the hotel. One of my favorite things about staying at the monorail resorts is you do get to see the electrical water pageant. This is a very unique nighttime show that happens on the water in Seven Seas Lagoon, which is that body of water right there. And it's a super cute like parade of floats through the water that all light up and play different songs. And you can see that from here at the Polynesian. I absolutely love that. Probably the most important detail for any kids are the pools. This here is the lava pool which is the main pool at this hotel with a towering volcano, a waterfall, and a thrilling 142 foot long water slide. The other pool is the Oasis pool, which is a bit quieter, more serene, and just as beautiful. I also know that the Oasis pool bar is shockingly good food wise. Polynesian also has Seven Seas Marina, which is where you can do boat rentals and even do some fishing excursions. Uh, those are for a separate fee. But if there's any smaller activities you want to do, you can also always check out these recreation activities boards, which you can typically find around the pools at hotels. Every Disney hotel has tons of recreation and most hotels have some specialty recreation. So here you can paint a ceramic pineapple, make your own kukui nut lays, do Mickey tie dye. Those are for an extra fee, but they have free ones as well, like the video game dance party or Aloha After Dark Holiday Edition. Some other classic options that you'll find at this hotel are campfire activities. Those happen nightly, weather depending, as well as movies under the stars. Same deal, nightly weather depending, and they vary. And the movie changes every night. So it depends on when you're staying, like what you'll get to watch. But I love doing movies under the 
the stars. I think they're so charming. But enough recreation. Let's talk about one of the main events of Disney's Polynesian, which is the dining. Since we're out by the pool still, let's start with the pool bars. Here we have Barefoot Pool Bar. This is the main pool bar located at the large lava pool. Has a lot of frozen drinks, Dole Whip based cocktails, Dole Whip based drinks. It is really super delicious. And you can see more about Barefoot Pool Bar and our drinking around Disney World Polynesian edition on the channel now. The other pool bar is again that one over at Oasis Pool. And I've heard the fish tacos over there are amazing. I've never made it over there because you do have to be a guest to access that one. It's inside the pool gates. But if you're staying here, apparently hit up Oasis Pool Bar. Now before we head in to talk about more of the dining, let's just take a little look at the layout of this resort. So the rooms are arranged in these external buildings. And that does mean that if it's pouring rain, you have outdoor pathways to make it to the lobby. Now it is very spread out, but it's not a crazy long walk. From one end of the resort to the other, it's about 15 minutes and the lobby is like smack in the middle. So it's really not too difficult to get around, but you can kind of see the lobby here, that main pool, that extra pool. And then there's a walkway to Grand Floridian this way, uh, water launch to Magic Kingdom this way. And it's actually a walkway to the transportation and ticket center that way. And we've got two lounges here that kind of go hand in hand. Out on this patio here, we have Trader Sam's Tiki Terrace. This is a really beautiful outdoor space that typically has live music, a ukulele player. It's situated next to this waterfall and you can see the fireworks from here at night. They serve some pretty tasty eats as well as many of the drinks that you'll find inside Trader Sam's Grog Grotto, which is a lot harder to get into. Trader Sam's Grog Grotto is located right through this store and it is what you see this line for. Uh, this bar is kind of tucked away. It's very small. It's literally just the stores where you can see it. And it is a very small bar that is totally interactive. There are effects when you order certain drinks. The bartenders are hilarious. And you might even find some special things happening to your seat if you are in the right seat. So it is a very, very fun time. And you can see us head there in uh, how we actually have the perfect day at Disney World with Dustin's perfect day on the channel now. The main quick service at this resort is Captain Cook's. Uh, there is mobile order here and there's a good amount of indoor seating and outdoor seating, but not a ton, a ton. You're gonna find some more basic classics like burgers and flatbreads here. You can also find some Polynesian favorites like the Thai coconut meatballs, which I love, and the delicious pulled pork nachos. There's also a section of grab and go for treats and ice cream and thing like that in here too. We're kind of strolling through the lobby now and it is really beautiful. This is a wonderful space to just relax in. Um, right now, the time I'm filming it is Christmas, so you'll see a few decorations, but it's beautiful year round. We're actually not heading into the lobby because one of the more exciting food locations is located right outside again. This is Pineapple Lanai. Pineapple Lanai is the Dole Whip location at this hotel. That's right, this hotel is Dole Whip. You can buy Dole Whip cups, Dole Whip floats. They sometimes have specialty cones and things like that. And you can even get Dole Whip with a rum floater. Yeah, you don't want to miss Pineapple Lanai. Even when I'm not staying here, sometimes my evening option of choice is to take a boat over here from Magic Kingdom, get Dole Whip, and watch the fireworks from the beach instead of in the crowded parts of the park. But I know what you're thinking. It's a fancy hotel. Where are the more fancy food options? And I'll show you. Now, there's no, like, seriously fancy dress-up restaurant at this hotel, but there are some highly, highly loved options, including Ohana. Ohana is a family style restaurant that serves up Polynesian favorites. They are famous for many of their items like their steak, the Ohana noodles, and for dessert, the famous Ohana bread pudding. It is family style serving. It is rather expensive and it's not personally my favorite restaurant to splurge on, but it is a lot of people's favorites. You'll also find live music like a ukulele player in here. And they do have a character breakfast that features Lilo and Stitch and Friends. Now, if you don't want the commitment of a big spend at Ohana, you can head right next door to Tambu Lounge. This is a lounge that is walk up, first come, first serve. And after 4 p.m., they serve many Ohana favorites here as well. So you can come and grab noodles if you want, um, which is pretty cool. They also have amazing drinks. And it depends on the day that you're here, but sometimes Tambu Lounge also features Fry Bucket working. With the mojito. This is my office. But that's date dependent. Also on the second floor of the Grand Ceremonial House, aka the lobby building, is going to be Kona Cafe and Kona Island. Kona Cafe is a table service restaurant serving up some Polynesian favorites as well as really delicious sushi. And Kona Island is just next door. It is a coffee bar. They serve up Joffrey's coffee here, including the Kona blend, which is specifically made for the Polynesian. And they have a little bit of sushi 
as well as some treats. My favorite thing to get here are the chocolate covered strawberries. There's also plenty of shopping in the main building, so if that's something you want to get up to, you can check those out. If you want to learn more in detail about the shopping spots, I do go fully into detail with them in my full Polynesian Village Resort tour. But let's talk transportation. So Disney's Polynesian Village Resort is a monorail resort. As you can see, it's loading right out there. I can't really film a better angle because of security, but the monorail does stop at Polynesian, Magic Kingdom, the Transportation and Ticket Center, uh, to transfer to Epcot, as well as Grand Floridian and Disney's Contemporary Resort. So the monorail is a major asset to get you to and from Magic Kingdom as well as Epcot. You can also get to Magic Kingdom via boat launch. Boat is one of my favorite ways to get around in Disney World, and the boat from Polynesian goes directly to Magic Kingdom. On the way back, you'll just have a stop at Grand Floridian before you come here. To head to the other hotels, you will be hopping on a bus from the bus stop out in front of the hotel. But don't worry, it's not too long a ride, usually between 12 and 20 minutes to get to any of the parks that you're headed to. Now, though Polynesian is super convenient, I do always recommend leaving about an hour to get from point A to point B in Disney World. You never know what might happen. The monorail could break down. There could be traffic. Who knows? So just allow more time just to make sure you get where you're going. Now that you know the basics of a stay at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, it's time to decide if you should get booking or keep looking. You should get booking if this is a bucket list item for you. This is a very famous Disney hotel and a lot of folks want to stay here. So if it's a bucket list item, you can handle the splurge, get booking. You also might want to get booking if you're a foodie. If you love eating, there's a ton of restaurants and the restaurants here are absolutely amazing. And finally, you should get booking if you're looking for a historic and luxurious Disney experience. This isn't going to be true luxury, but it is definitely fancy by Disney World standards and it is absolutely historic as one of the opening day hotels. And you're gonna wanna keep looking if you don't want to splurge. Though this hotel is wonderful, the prices are pretty exorbitant. I mean, often over $1,000 a night, and that's just not something that most of us, myself included, can really justify no matter how amazing the experience. Polynesian is a place that you can stop in and enjoy even without staying here, so maybe consider doing that if the splurge isn't right for you. You should also keep looking if you don't plan to spend a lot of time at your hotel. Some folks plan to spend all of their time in the park with no resort days, no time to enjoy the hotel. And if that's you, you are much better off booking a value and saving some money for some more exciting experiences in the theme park. You can check out my full tours of Disney's all-star resorts that are on the channel now, and those videos will really help you see what to expect at some of those cheaper options. But have no fear, if you do decide to keep looking, I can help. There's a video on the channel right now where I ranked every single Disney World Resort hotel and I've stayed in every single one, so I think I know what I'm talking about. In that video, I discuss who should get booked in and who should keep looking at every single Disney hotel so that you can find which one is right for you. And if you want more information about any Disney World hotel, you can check out my full tour of every single hotel on the channel. I've got a video for every single one, so you can check those out on the channel now. I certainly hope this video has helped you decide if a stay at Polynesian is right for you. If you liked it, go ahead and like and subscribe, and now go watch my full tour of Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. I'll see you there.